So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to learn about the command line interface. And the first thing you need to know is a little bit of the history of computers. And when computers first started, uh, when computers first started, this is what they looked like. And we didn't have a user inter a graphical user interface. We had a command line interface. There was no way computers didn't have the processing power to do graphics. And it was actually quite revolutionary when we got a GUI. And GUI stands for graphical user interface. And so a GUI, uh, you know, GUI looked like looks looked like this, right? Where we had buttons we could click and desktop icons, right? And, you know, it'd just be basically like your Windows uh, desktop. You know, where, hey, look at all this stuff, and I could click all these things and drag them around and click buttons and go to File Explorer, and, and graphically, that's the interface the user uses, the graphical user interface. And uh, so we went from the command line interface to the graphical user interface. But still, in programming, a lot of things are done at the command line interface, and they could be done quickly, and you could do things at the command line interface, which are much more powerful than a graphical user interface, and including some scripting and things like that. So the first thing we're talking about here is uh, CLI, command line interface, versus GUI, right? Graphical user interface. And then the next thing to know about command line interface versus uh, uh, the next thing to know about the command line interface terminology is that sometimes it's called uh, the terminal, sometimes it's called bash, sometimes it's called shell. I generally associate all this with, po with POSIX, and POSIX is Mac, is Unix, Unix, Linux, Mac. So POSIX types operating systems are Unix, Linux, Mac, and you call the command line interface terminal bash shell. And DOS, which I still think of DOS as Windows, all right? And uh, DOS is just uh, the command prompt, right? Is how, that's how I think of it. Anybody have any other insight who's done any, a little of this? No, okay, cool. And so those are just some of the terminologies. And so, it's, it's uh, Go is created by dudes who created Unix. And so if you try to use the command prompt on a Windows machine, right, you're not going to be able to do some of the commands I show you. And so we're going to be using POSIX type commands for the command, for the command line because they use different commands, all right, because they were two different operating systems. So we're going to use POSIX style commands. And uh, I see people on Macs. Who's on Windows? And a couple of people on Windows. All right. So to make this work on Windows, I'm going to show you uh, in the next video, I'll talk about um, installing GitHub Desktop and Git Shell. Okay? So to make uh, Windows users. And that's how uh, Git Shell will allow us to use Git shell will allow us to use uh, POSIX uh, CLI commands on Windows. Okay, we'll be able to do them inside Git shell. So we'll see that in the next video. All right, so let's see how to use the terminal, and uh, and then we'll practice with it. And I'm going to do terminal commands, and I'm just going to call it the terminal. And um, I'm going to open a terminal using Spotlight in Mac and command spacebar open spotlight and I type in terminal and my terminal opens up and we got to know this because we're going to configure some environment variables and and we have to do that using the terminal and so here are terminal commands right so the first one is ls and that lists everything in your uh, directory Well, how do you know which directory you're located in at that moment?
PW, PW, whatever. Print working directory. Oh, thank you. Somebody fixing that? Thanks. Uh, print working directory is what that stands for. And this is LS stands for list to me. And so if I do a P, PWD, shows me I'm in users TM002. And I could do a command K or clear, and that clears my screen. So the next one is command plus K. I don't know. Clears terminal screen. Or uh, clear clears terminal screen. No, this is only Mac or when or Unix or Linux. Okay, so I cleared my screen. So I have LS, I have print working directory PW, I have clear or command K. So what we've got so far. We could also do LS dash LA, list, list all, in which case I'm gonna get more information. So I'm gonna add that in, LS dash LA. And I think of that as list, list all. That's just Todd's way of thinking about it. I'm not sure if that's what it means. List everything with more information. Okay? So you're just going to reference these commands later as you do an exercise and find things. And then we have CD. Change directory. And change directory, I'm currently in that. And if I list, I uh, see I have documents. So I could CD into documents, and I press tab to complete whatever I'm typing. And now I've entered documents. So now before, before I was in that, and I CD into documents, and now I'm there, right? So I went from, you out of here, Ruben? Yeah, Went from here, here. all right, see you tomorrow. Went from there to there. Users this to users that. Okay, so PWD and CD. So change, change directory. You, uh, example is CD documents. And you saw me use tab. Allows auto completion of uh, matching what anything you've started to type. So what that means is I could do CD CD uh, dot then hit tab and it becomes CD documents. Okay. Anybody have questions? Good? It's built into Mac. So I'll show you how to set yours up on Windows in a second. So ls, ls-a, print working director, command plus k, clear, cd, tab, and uh, I'm just going to indent that under CD. So next, what else? CD dot dot moves up a directory. Examples, CD dot dot. Another example. <coughs> You could do that multiple times. So this is just moving through folders. So if I ls in here, I now have that. And I could change into go blueprints. And now I'm here. And I could do a CD and go up a level. And now I'm in documents. I could go back into go blueprints. 
and I'm now back there and I could do a CD up several levels and now I'm in users TM002. So that's how you navigate in and out of folders, directory structure. What's up? Good to know that in Windows, but in Windows you can also go to whatever directory you want to be in and control right click and open tabs or open command line in that directory without having to navigate through the command line. Just open it right there. Oh, cool. All right, so that's uh, changing directories, print working directory, list, list all. If I wanted to make a directory, so right now I'm going to make a directory. I could see my directories, and I don't have it. I have these temps right here. So temp means I don't need it anymore. I'll create a new one first. Make dir. And then, I don't know, temp, uh, go, bridge, okay? And so now when I do an ls, I have temp, go, bridge. It made a folder. Make dir. So make dir makes a directory, which is also known, aka, also known as a folder. And uh, and then I could do remove, and remove often works best. Remove often. Uh, you could also do remove recursively with force. The dash rf is a flag. So if I just try to remove, remove, temp, go, bridge, uh, remove, temp, row, go, bridge is directory. Did it remove it? No. Nope. But if I remove recursively with force, temp, go, bridge, no longer there. Remove recursively with force, temp, TLS, no longer there. Remove recursively with force, temp. Why didn't that remove it? That what did I type in? What was preventing that removal? I don't know why that one doesn't want to. Which one? Uh, oh, just the remove? I don't know. Why I need to do. I don't know. I don't think there was anything in it. There wasn't anything in it. So the recursively with force just means, dang it, remove it. So that's a. Uh, that's remove or remove cursively with force. And then there's an editor. So there's a text editor. And you do nano file name. So it creates a file, or if the file exists, it opens the file in a text editor. So I'm going to, again, make dir and temp go, whatever. That file is now there. I'm going to change directories into temp go. And now there's nothing in there, right? And I could do nano and sample txt or whatever I want to call it. It opens it up in an editor. And then I could control X and yes, and file to write to, enter, and now ls, that file's there. And if I go to my directory, that's in tm002, temp go, sample text, and it created that text file. It's a nice little text editor. And then I could remove that sample text, remove sample text, yes. And now that's no longer there. Change directories up a level. And temp goes there. Remove recursively of force temp go. It's gone. So it's just a different way of doing everything we already know how to do with the graphical user interface. But I don't know where I'm trying to alt tab to. But oh, I'm looking at my notes. 
but with commands at the terminal. So those are the terminal commands we'll need to know. I may have left something out, but I can't think of it if I did. Those are the ones we'll need to know when we uh, uh, set up our workspace environment. And I'm just thinking, there's a couple more. I'll, there's a couple more I'll show you in this video, which we'll add in to this list when we get there. Any questions? All these commands should work in a batch. Uh huh. On Windows. Uh huh. So we'll do a. We'll get it going for all the Windows users in the next. Uh, my nano command. Oh, nano won't work in Windows. We'll get it. We'll get a. Uh, we'll get you all up on on Windows machines. I'll show you how to do that, and then we'll have a hands-on exercise for terminals. If you're already on a Mac, I'll give you the hands-on exercises right now, so you could ignore the Windows stuff. And the hands-on exercises will be make a directory, use a CD into that directory, make a file using nano, save the file as uh, go rules txt, or better, better yet, let's save it as my goals txt, and put in it why, why you're taking this class, what you hope to learn by learning programming. So make a file using nano, and then uh, save it, and then uh, remove that file, remove the directory. Like I said, if you, if you plug in Notepad instead of Nano, it'll do the same thing. I forgot to tell you one more. C oh, Notepad instead of Nano? Yeah. yeah. All, All right. PowerShell. PowerShell? It works in PowerShell except for uh, the LS. You can't do Use the command notepad on Windows. And what what is PowerShell? That's a Git environment or a, a, a GUI environment for Windows. A GUI or CLI. command line. Oh, I'm sorry, CLI. And it, it allows you to do Unix type commands. Yes. And does that come installed on Windows? Unix. PowerShell. It's it's also Windows, Windows, or Windows 7. And do you have to navigate to Developer Preferences and stuff and turn it on? Type in PowerShell. Sweet. All right, so I'll show that in the next video since we talked about it. Yeah, it's only like two or three weeks old, right? It's re really new, isn't it? Yeah, but the PowerShell to do Linux, Unix type commands, Mac type commands, that's new. That's only the last couple of weeks, right? PowerShell? PowerShell is based on .NET, but it's been around for about 10 years now. Oh, really? And you could always do Linux on Windows? See? Not comp sci background. <laughs> but is it DOS commands or Linux commands? Unix, uh, Mac, POSIX commands? It's both. Really? You could do both? All right. We're just going to do the Git one. I'll show that one because I don't know that, so I don't want to send people the wrong way. <laughs>